Um, our next talk is uh, Stephen Whip, and he said, "What was your? What did you tell me to say?" <laughs> I had it a minute ago. At your age, don't worry. I know. I have half Alzheimer's. <laughs> now he tells him. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Activism through investment. Activism through investment. Stephen Whip. So, like, I need a stage because people don't see me. <laughs> I stand out. Do you want a mic, though? Mic's good. Mic. Can, can, can people hear me at the back? No. no, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm always a good friend of a mic. Who's my best friend? Anyway, um, good morning and welcome. Chris, thank you for your efforts in putting this together. It's a, it's a long time coming, and I know other Chris's in the room have been doing similar work in this community. And it's uh, very exciting to share ideas and passions with each other and see where that might take us down the road. I'm one of those uh, suits. I'm a guy who is a stockbroker. However, I'm a little bit out of the box uh, for most. And I'm a passionate guy about changing the world. I think investing is just one tool in which we can use to do that. So earlier today we heard about the negativity and the positive things and how we can help shift people. I also believe people don't shift unless there's fear. And I'm hoping that what Guy is talking about, about that peak, I'm hoping that scares the bloody hell out of a lot of people. Because it's the only way we're going to shift so in my, uh, in my world, um, I've been involved in many, many things in my life and unfortunately landed in an area which is very different. And I believe that, I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to ask everybody to stand up. Can everybody just stand up for a second? Thank you. Now, if you are an investor, if you have investments, please sit down. Okay. <laughs> If you contribute to the Canada Pension Plan, please sit down. If you are drawing income from the Canada Pension Plan, please sit down. Great. <laughs> All the rest of you? So, did you know that 71% of pension plans in Canada rely on the investment manager to make votes at annual general meetings of BP, Enron, Suncor, BCE, you name it, all the companies in the world. Not one, hardly any pension plans listen to you, the people who put the money into the pot. Furthermore, this stat is even worse than that. 97% of us, and I include me in that up until about 10 years ago, don't exercise our right as shareholders. So most of us would probably have mutual funds. Did you know that the mutual fund now, by law, has to tell you how they're voting on proxies? Most people don't. Did you know that you actually have some power to contact that mutual fund company and say, how did you vote on that motion that the Dogwood Initiative from Victoria put forth about the Gateway Pipeline project across northern BC? You have investments that are sitting there, and I liken it to those of us, although I would never was in a family like that because my parents used to drag me to the polling booth. But I'm sure there are people who never vote. In fact, there's probably, what, 40% of Canadians in the last federal election didn't vote. And we're not exercising our right as shareholders to change the world. Why? Because it's a bunch of gobbledygook. Financial industry hides behind all kinds of great words. Short selling. What the hell is short selling? You know, I never figured that one out. I'm a broker, I go short selling here. You go back into the books and you go, oh, right, short selling. Short selling is what caused, was one of the major causes behind the collapse in the financial situation that happened a couple of years ago. 
There were motions that were brought forward at annual general meetings at all the big banks in Canada ask them to, to review their policy around short selling. Not to change it, review it, and report back in the next annual general meeting and tell us what you found. That got 2% of the shareholder support. The largest was 2.8 Bank Nova Scotia. So we can't change unless we get involved. On a better note, Canadians have been able to use their proxies or use their their, um, their shares to vote at annual general meetings and to bring motions forward for about six years in Canada. Britain is way ahead of us. They've been doing it for eons. North and the United States, the same thing. But Canada is now one of the leaders in that area. I'll give you an example. The first year that we were able to do that, a group of us got together and talked with pension funds, etc., around Canada, and asked them to support a motion that would ask the banks to begin doing what we call a carbon audit on their corporate loans. In other words, if they were going to lend money to Suncor, we want to know what the carbon emissions were on that loan. And we want that taken into consideration as a risk factor. Because corporate world has not woken up yet to the fact that carbon emissions are going to cost them dearly. And as shareholders of any of those companies, that's a risk. You need to know that. That's a risk just as not being able to meet sales targets is a risk. And I know it's gobbledygook, and I know it's mutual funds, or it's shares, and it's capitalism, but if we don't pay attention to it, we're not going to change it. That's just one tool. There's other things that we obviously we need to do, but I believe it passionately that this is one area that's been overlooked. So <clears throat> the back when we first the first motion we brought forward to these banks, the first year, we got 32% of the shareholders on side for the banks to begin using carbon emissions as a risk determinator when giving out loans. Unheard of. Never anywhere in the world had that happened. The following year, 97% the shareholders voted. But then comes the follow through. And Guy will probably attest to this, it happens all the time. Yeah, we're on site, we want to reduce carbon emissions, right? And in your mutual funds, whether you're investing in an SRI, which is socially responsible investing, or an ethical fund, you will find oil companies. And they will tell us that the reason they're investing in these oil companies is to change what they're doing, to change the operations. We want to reduce the carbon emissions. Reduce the carbon emissions to what level? And at what point do you say the heck with it? At what point do you say, I'm no longer going to invest in that company because I don't believe that we should be in the tar sands? That's another thing that's changed. We've got to keep calling it the tar sands because it's not oil sands, people. It's tar sands. There's no secret about that. But shareholder engagement does work. I've seen it work. I'll give you a quick example in Africa. There was a mining company who was <clears throat> losing three workers for every position in one year. And so, this is fairly crass. We went to them and said, so you've got to provide health care to these people. You've got to provide education. And their comment was, no, why, why should we do that? So we, uh, late night, it was a, uh, this is a group of people, we were in Vancouver, and uh, we probably had too much wine to drink. We said, well, wonder if we could put a dollar amount on that. That's what companies really listen to. So it turned out that they could actually spend about $18 per ounce that they extracted on health care and community education. The next day, the next time we said that to them, they went, oh, okay, that makes sense, let's do it. But they had never thought of that. The BP situation, there's an a, 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 um, investment manager that I work with, and what he has done, what he did, was he went to BP in November and said, show us what you would do if that well blew up. And they gave him a whole bunch of reports and data and everything else, and he said, bullshit. And he sold it, and of course, the rest is history. But that's the kind of analysis that you get. But we also have to be, as shareholders, I think, more diligent. And we need to write the letters to Canada Pension Plan. 
They're aware of this stuff. They have a whole team of people which they call socially responsible investment team engagement. It's now called ESG for Environment Social Governance. Governance is a big thing, say on pay, etc. Women on boards. With that, I'm going to close that down because I've been given the one minute about one minute ago. Thank you for your time, but please consider becoming more active with your investments, whether it's Canada Pension Plan or your local bank. Thanks. Bye.